the finasteride decision, taking finasteride, not to mention dutasteride, DHT blockers, mainly for men that are on androgens, TRT, all the way through a spectrum of steroid users, understanding the benefits versus the risks is key. A small fraction of men do develop a significant syndrome, finasteride syndrome, affecting adversely libido and different degrees of erectile dysfunction. In this video today, I'm going to be explaining to you guys uh, DHT physiology, some of the steroids, DHT derived steroids, fascinating with the history clinically and with my experience and on a spectrum of blocking DHT with finasteride and dutasteride, what happens clinically to a man, mainly it's neurocognitively because it doesn't affect adversely in the muscles and we're going to get it into that right now. My name is Dr. Thomas O'Connor. I'm known as the Anabolic Doc. I am board certified internal medicine expert, ex-primary care doctor. I am on staff of University of Connecticut School of Medicine. So I've dedicated my whole life to men on androgens. Please subscribe and let everyone else know about this because I want to grow the channel. Understanding dihydrotestosterone, DHT, is synthesized irreversibly from testosterone by five alpha reductase found in many tissues in the penis, the scrotum, the prostate, in the pelvis, in those tissues, in those glands, if you will. Also skin, hair follicles, that's how it relates to male pattern balding. Also in the liver where it relates to systemic levels of dihydrotestosterone. And in the brain, the CNS, we have learned, in addition to other neurochemicals, dopamine, serotonin, norepinephrine, on the sex, in the mood, that DHT is absolutely critical. DHT itself is more potent as an agonist on the androgen receptor. Unlike testosterone, however, DHT is inactivated by three alpha hydroxy steroid dehydrogenase into a very weak androgen in skeletal muscle. And therefore, DHT itself has been known as a very weak anabolic steroid. However, guys, during those steroid years where the three classes of steroids were derived, DHT, NOR19, testosterone-derived steroids, when you tweak these agents with different functional groups, we know that you can come up with massively powerful steroids, Anadrol, Anavar, Winstrol, and less more potent anabolic steroids, Primabolin, Masteron, and Proviron, and there are a host of others. But we know that when you utilize these medications, these steroids of the DHT class, you get amazing effects with other steroids, classically with testosterone. This is biohacking. I mean, this is going on now. When you look at using testosterone in Primo or Masteron, not to mention Provirin with different doses and regimens, it's anti-estrogenic. It provides some anabolism for sure, depending on your doses, and it can work in the central nervous system to make men feel so concentrated, so euphoric and sexual with this class of meds, utilizing it in concert with other steroids, mainly testosterone. But we know, we understand completely that DHT endogenously, not to mention exogenously from these other steroids, will absolutely lead to male pattern balding and accelerate this. A lot of genetics on this, guys. Therefore, men and women have been incorporated DHT blockers into their regimens for many, many years. This is where things start to get tricky. Men not on any 
supplemental androgens or testosterone have been taking DHT blockers like finasteride mainly itself and dutasteride for years. Both finasteride and dutasteride block DHT 1 and 2, which is dutasteride. There's usually minimal complications, even for men not on androgens. However, a small fraction of men do develop a significant syndrome, finasteride syndrome. And you could see my video that I've done on this to gain further insight into exactly what this is. Essentially, finasteride syndrome is a severe impairment on a spectrum crossing mood, concentration, malaise and fatigue, and of course, sexual function affecting adversely libido and different degrees of erectile dysfunction. It is rare, but it's potentially very, very dangerous, and it's about 1.2% in the studies of all men utilizing finasteride, but the studies are not great. And apart from this, additional research, 2020 World Journal of Men's Health had an article that I read called Health Risks Associated with Long-Term Finasteride in Dutasteride. What we see is outcomes, increasing incidence of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, impaired resistance of insulin through a spectrum of real classic type 2 diabetes, a dry eye syndrome disease, and some kidney disease. So just blocking DHT, there's not only consequences chronically on your central nervous system, but also on your body metabolic systems. Now, let's talk about DHT on the brain of the CNS. We know that DHT is crucial not only for developing CNS in utero and in children, but after full adulthood, it's mandatory to maintain sexual desire, erections integral for mood and focus. So the important question is for you guys, do you use finasteride? Do you use it without supplemental testosterone as millions of men do? or in this milieu, in this world now of fitness world, with so many ancillary agents, anti-estrogens, blockers of this, blockers of that, DHT blockers, do you add this to protect your hair? I see that men on testosterone and different steroids can do this. They absolutely can. It's gonna be man per man, but I'm gonna tell you from my perspective, most men don't do it because they fear the CNS side effects, mainly of libido, concentration, and erectile dysfunction. It's absolutely incredible that we fear that. You know, guys, I've been on testosterone for over 30 years and some steroids, as you guys know, some of these DHT steroids, of, of course. And you could see that my hair has thinned out over many, many years, and essentially I have good genetics on that, but I think myself, years ago, 20 years ago, do I use DHT blockers and the consideration mainly for hair loss, but some potential to protect the prostate? And I realized after seeing the data and so many of you guys telling me with, showing me <laughs> that there's side effects, mainly in the CNS, and I don't wanna lose that concentration, that focus, and that sex. So I'm just in such fear of it. And on the prostate itself, this is really controversial. The hair is quite straightforward. Take the medication if you can. If you have no side effects, keep doses to a down low, we'll talk about in a minute, and move forward and monitor yourself. Now, for the prostate, we know that the data, there was two large studies over the last 10 years or so that showed that if you use DHT blockers, the malignancy on prostate, prostate cancer incidence number may have been reduced, but the fear is that it may have selected for a more aggressive malignancy. And you could look at those studies, and we know now that the data on testosterone shows that it doesn't cause prostate cancer, thank God. However, you better screen for it 
And if you have some prostate cancer and you're in your 40s or even up to your 60s and 70s, and you're taking supplemental androgens, mainly testosterone, it could stimulate the growth of an existing malignancy. So again, this stuff is very, very tricky, but there's the data on DHT blockers for the prostate. And until we see more, I'm just gonna focus on DHT blockers for male pattern balding. Now, the plan, what's a basic plan for all of you guys? In light of the new data, especially the systemic data, right, with this potential worsening of metabolic and kidney disease, even if it's true to any degree, as you get older, you have to understand that your organs are key. That's real anti-aging, and that's why I have my A, B, C, D, S's, the ABCDs on the Anabolic Doc app that you will have to manage with me and your healthcare providers ABCDs. You do it, it's guaranteed to minimize adverse outcomes as you age. But in this case, I don't like to utilize DHT blockers, so let the hair go, guys, maybe. But if you do use it, here's what you can do. You can do alternative doses. In other words, finasteride, the Propecia, is typically utilized one milligram a day. I have a lot of patients that take it every other day. Even 0.5 milligrams every day or every other day, or even two or three times a week, like a Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Now, there are topical agents, and I like that because potentially you're getting much less into the systemic circulation. Now, for an example, here's what you have out there in the marketplace. Minoxidil, like 7.5%, dutasteride, and something called trentinoin. This is a combination that's out there topically. Now, if you see it mixed with a corticosteroid topically, I don't like that because corticosteroids, as they can be catabolic and destroy the joints, that's why orthopedic doctors are careful not to give too many injections, those steroid, corticosteroid injections into your elbow, into your back, into your shoulder, because it can de deteriorate the, the tissue. So with this, I don't like the effects of chronically placing corticosteroids on my scalp skin because I think that's gonna be bad over time. So that was a new thing that's come up during the pandemic where they just put the kitchen sink on there, but I'd st I would stay with topical minoxidil, dutasteride and or finasteride with different percents. Also, you can use PRP injections and you could measure DHT directly, but there's so much variability in this stuff, guys. You just typically go with one of these regimens like the one milligram every day or every other day and you go by feel. How do you feel? How's your sex? How's your brain? How's your mood? Anxiety. Looking at all these numbers, guys, in the labs is so dynamic. There's so much variability. It's a snapshot in time. And it doesn't really pan out that you could plot these numbers. Guys, it's not really like the ABCDs because the androgen level, especially when you're on Sipinate, Enanthate, Sustanon 250, and you're dosing this and you're looking at the levels. Are you up? Are you down? Did you go to the lab right after the injection? This is gonna be the same thing. I've seen so many men, patients of mine over, over so many years, checking and checking and checking and they're saying, Doc, you know, we know it's potent, like the anti-estrogens. You know it's gonna work. Use a minimal dose and go by feel. You see that, guys? That's the technique. So I really hope this helps you guys. And in the end of the day, if you're on androgens, you can't have everything, guys, but you can do the ABCDs to protect your organs. You could use your healthcare practitioners. And in this case, I think you can go see a good hair restoration facility. There are geniuses in there, and they're gonna have all sorts of, of proper techniques and even transplants. I mean, if you wanna have that or you can afford it, and they may want you to take DHT blockers orally to maintain their work, I know this. But maybe you can go for the topical or maybe you can just not go for it. And you can just go for the surgery itself and hopefully 
in the end, you feel great about yourself. But in the end of the day, for all you guys out there that are bald and sexy as hell and feel great about yourselves, this video is not for you. <laughs> Please, guys, leave us some great comments because your comments are so important for every man in the world to see exactly what's really happening in your world because this is a brotherhood among all of us. Thank you so much, gentlemen. This is what you get with the Anabolic Doc app. Number one, a digital history and physical exam. Number two, weekly Zoom meetings with me. Number three, discounted commercial labs. Number four, weekly member only uncensored videos. Number five, Anabolic Doc's mailbag. You can't come to the meetings or you don't want to come to the meetings. You ask a question, I might respond to your question by making a video, put it back up on the app and you get to see your own question. Lastly, diagnostic and management library that is easily searchable by keywords.